Things are about to get a little wild here on Soda City Living today. That's because we're at Riverbank Zoo and our friend Greg is going to tell us about some really cool animals. So thanks for having us. Oh, no, thanks. It's always fun to get people out here to see the zoo. Oh, and we yeah. got a lot going on. So I want a people lot. to come out. <laughs> yes. And one of the newest things going on is the baby flamingos back here that are just adorable. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, we uh, Riverbanks has been involved in the flamingo program for quite a while. And we've been very lucky that we've got an amazing team uh, that works with them and we've had chicks just about every year uh, mm -hmm. so this year we've got two chicks on the ground uh, I think a lot of people come out here and they're very very surprised when they see the chicks um, just how fluffy they look but those are feathers on on that chick it's not it's not fur um, but it's a lot of fun for for our local community to come out and realize that the gem that is Riverbank Zoo is you know it's right here in town and uh, you can come out and see baby flamingos or you can go see sea lions rhinos there's a lot of stuff to see oh yeah there's always something new here and tell us what you do you have a very interesting job sure so my name is Greg PC I'm the director of animal care here at the Riverbank Zoo and I've actually only been here for about three years I grew up in Charlotte though and I've lived all over the country I was down in Florida California with Wisconsin and I knew I wanted to get back to the Carolinas mm -hmm. so for me this was this was coming home yeah um, yeah I know and, and that's what I, that's what <laughs> I say home too. <laughs> yeah. uh, but coming home to the Carolinas has been a lot of fun and obviously Riverbanks has a, has a very strong reputation mm -hmm. and it was great for me to join the family yeah so tell us a little bit about the process that you guys have been going through with these baby flamingos it's very interesting <laughs> yeah so uh, obviously any of our newborn animals we we're overly concerned just making sure that they're safe um, and what the team has done here is we work with our flamingos actually they do the nest building they do everything that they're supposed to do and then once they lay the egg we'll actually take the egg back into the incubator make sure that it's developing appropriately and it hatches okay and then the team actually comes out and we swap their dummy egg with the chick and then the parents are like hey, I got a chick and I got to take care of the chick. Mm -hmm. And for the first few weeks of their lives, because the chicks are pretty small, the team will swap out at the end of the night the chick with the egg. Wow. So the parents go from taking care of an egg to taking care of a chick to taking care of an egg to taking care of a chick. Um, so it is it is an interesting experience and our team has actually gotten recognized in the AZA, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. They've gotten recognized for the way that we manage the flamingo flock and the flamingo chicks. Oh my gosh. Um, so that's, that's one thing that knowing when your peers in the zoo community are also saying, Wow, that's really cool. You're, you're doing it. You're doing it a pretty neat way, um, and it's it's just a lot of fun to interact with the chicks, interact with the parents, um, and and just see how successful this flock has been. Oh yeah, and those chicks are so silly. It looks like they're just really trying to figure out life right now. They've, is, <laughs> they've still got the cuteness, but the clumsiness that just I mean, you can sit here for hours and watch oh, them. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. White rhinos don't have very good eyesight, but they've got a very good sense of hearing. So you'll see those ears spinning around different directions keeping an ear on what's going on all around him. Mm -hmm. um, so checking out his surroundings with his ears and then he relies more on his eyes when he gets a little bit closer. Um, their sense of smell is also really good as well. So um, white rhinos in the wild, they come from big open expanses of grassland. And one of the way they, ways they communicate with each other is actually through their dung. So they use a dung midden where it's a general location where everybody goes and uses the bathroom. Ah. And the male can pull a lot of the scents off of that, even though we think it's disgusting. There's a lot of hormones and a lot of other scents in there. So he can determine not only is there another male in this area, if there's a female in this area, he can determine whether she's an estrus or not wow. from some of those smells. So we can gain a lot of information from these animals from a blood sample. Mm -hmm. Well, getting a blood sample from an animal voluntarily, when you take your dog to a vet, they're just gonna hold on to your dog and they're gonna get the blood sample. It's not that difficult. Well, I can't do that with him. Mm -hmm. I need him to stand still. I need him to voluntarily say, I'm okay with you sticking me with a needle and, and getting a blood sample. So the team has actually worked on identifying where these veins and stuff are on the top of his foot. Oh wow. So they can reach in and they can get a blood sample. Well, we've been able to successfully get the test tube of blood to run all the tests and everything we need to do for his exam. But the team has taken it one step further. They've actually had him standing still long enough that they've been able to fill a bag of blood. So he can be a blood donor, oh but then God. also we can spin that down. And we now have in our freezer, we have a bank of plasma and the plasma can be used to help sick rhinos, especially wow. baby rhinos that maybe their mom rejected them and they don't get all the 
stuff, the antibodies mm -hmm. and the stuff they need in that, that first few days, the plasma can replace that. So Bill is a white rhino plasma donor. Oh, and cool. he's one of the only ones in the country that has donated. We got over a liter of plasma from him. There was uh, somebody there at this conference from South Africa from a rhino orphanage. And they actually came to her after the conference, just after the presentation to say, hey, I'd love to get more information because I want to be able to use that in South Africa yeah. for the rhino orphans. Um, and so my keeper was blown away. So riverbanks impacting global conservation as well, just was something that we think is simple. Mm -hmm. To that rhino orphanage, it was not simple. It was life changing. feed the giraffe, can't mm. wait to feed the giraffe. Um, but we have a lot more. There's uh, experiences where we feed the lorikeets. Uh, there's also a climbing wall. We've got the carousel, the sky high safari. So there's a lot of opportunities for you to come out and do more than just stroll around the zoo. Oh, yeah. and, and so here we, we call it explore more. And so yeah, you can get a wristband and you can uh, take advantage of some of these activities. But but definitely I think the giraffe experience is, oh, it is was a favorite. So much fun. And those greens that we're feeding the giraffes, do the giraffe, is it like a bottomless pit kind of? <laughs> so, like, do not, the giraffes ever get tired of it? <laughs> sure. Uh, so the, the good news is the giraffe, uh, they are browsers, so they should be eating leaves off of trees. Mm -hmm. So we want to get them lettuce and kale and things like that. And that is mostly what is in those buckets. Buckets. Okay. Uh, so we have a set amount, and it's it's three buckets uh, that we give to the giraffe. But we have a couple of giraffes that are a little bit more prone to come over okay. and, and eat the giraffe. And I would say Bruce, the one you were feeding, um, he eats a lot of lettuce. Yeah, so. <laughs> he, and he knows that he wants, and he knows where to get it. Too. Exactly, it was exactly. Hilarious. But it's a lot of fun, and I think just that opportunity to be that close to a giraffe is one thing, mm -hmm. but then also to feed them, and then you start to really interact by, you know, I got licked by a giraffe, yes. or I got, I got drooled on by a giraffe. So you, there's not many places in Colombia that you can say you got drooled on by a giraffe. I so. can't think of any besides <laughs> here. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. Definitely come out and come out and see it.